Okay, yeah. So I'm James, and I'm going to talk to you about the distribution of Starbucks around the United States, which sounds super exciting. Um, <laughs> I know. Uh, my, my day job is I am an astronomer. I'm a grad student at the University of Washington. I spend most of my days looking at things like this. It's very cool. Um, and I look at stellar populations and how they change in time. There's the punchline. Um, on a side project, I run a blog where I write articles using science and math to answer sort of fun and silly questions. Uh, here's a good example. Uh, what would the political boundaries of our world look like if they were drawn using stellar constellations? Uh, you can look at this, look at your favorite country, and uh, muse about what that would mean for, you know, Cascadia. Um, <laughs> the most important ingredient I've found in getting a PhD is you need to be super caffeinated, especially when you're getting a PhD in astronomy where you stay up all night looking at stars, and I do that. We sit up all night for nights on end and look at stars. And so you need a strong cup of coffee. Um, and one of the first uh, investigations, the first studies on my blog, was looking at the distribution of coffee at UW. Uh, and thank God, you're always within two minutes walk of a cup of coffee. It's awesome. Uh, it's totally awesome. <laughs> now, I would wager that every single person in this room has had a chance to, uh, to frequent this business at some point in time. You're about uh, a half mile from ground zero Starbucks. Um, and this is really the 12,000 pound gorilla of coffee in the world. And um, in Seattle alone, there's 80 Starbuckses or so just within like a five mile radius of where you're sitting right now, which is nuts. In New York, it gets as high as 150 uh, within like five square miles. That's crazy. That's so much Starbucks. Uh, and this got me thinking, you know, what does this distribution look like across the entire country? Um, can we kind of map how far we all are from all the Starbuckses? And rather than paying some data warehouse a bunch of money, I did the... Uh, academic thing of going and getting it for free on the internet. And we, and some friends and I uh, put this together, and this is what we called the United States of Starbucks. Um, so this is about 85 or 90% of all the company-owned locations uh, mapped into their respective locations here. Well, we've connected all the dots using what's called the Delaunay Triangulation. Um, you're going to get a little math today, I'm sorry. Somebody had to do it. Um, you can see it clusters around cities and it clusters around highways. I-5 is nicely represented here. Um, and this is only in the contiguous U.S. I got a lot of people bitching about the uh, Hawaii and Alaska. This drew to mind a now famous uh, blog post by Stephen Von Worley called the United States of McDonald's. And he used a similar kind of databasing technique to find the lowest density point of McDonald's in like North Dakota, which is not at all surprising. And so we decided to do the same kind of thing. And we created what's called the uh, Voronoi diagram, which is a, you can make it using the Delaunay triangulation for those of you playing along at home. And, um, <laughs> and, and we laid out all the locations here, and we connected it with this wire mesh. And the point is, one of these nodes gives you the furthest location from a Starbucks. <laughs> um, you know, if you're so inclined to go there, this is in Alta, Wyoming. Um, <laughs> it's about seven miles from Alta, Wyoming. It's actually in the middle of nowhere. Uh, it's in Grand Teton National Park. It's a gorgeous place. I tried to get a Google, a Google Street View image of this. Yeah, this is the new slogan. Of course, there are no roads there, so this is the closest you get to a Google Street View image is somebody's hiking photo. During the creation of this article, I also did a lot of research on the history of Starbucks and uh, academic literature on Starbucks. Um, this is an interesting study. I didn't do this, but your rent increases with proximity to Starbucks. Probably many of you experience this if you live in Capitol Hill or near the market. And I started wondering, how are we distributed around Starbucks instead of the other way around, right? Uh, maybe it is the other way around. And in fact, this is just a statement about urbanization. Um, about 82% of people in the U.S. are living in what's considered an urbanized area, yet Seattle would be one of those places. And so we calculated uh, in little circles around every single location the number of people within one mile, two miles, 50, 100 miles. We calculated all the number of people. We used U.S. census data for this. It's very handy. It's online, also free. Um, and this makes what I think is the most beautiful figure of this entire uh, visualization series, and that is the distance from Starbucks versus the number of people contained within that distance. And the punchline here is that 80% of you people live within 20 miles of a Starbucks. And it's ridiculous. And I think this is really the definition of urbanization. 80% of you, that's the 80-20 rule right there. Um, so, I think this is amazing. This company grew out of one location in, within my lifetime, one location like a mile away, and now every single one of you goes there for a pumpkin spice latte. Uh, it's incredible. Thank you.